Okay, here I am at the grave site. This is going to be a really peculiar one. Here I am at a grave site for a man named Lewis Moses Rose. Now, Lewis Moses Rose is one of the most controversial things from the Alamo. So, we're going to discuss what the story is, and then we'll discuss what the what the possibilities are. Louis Rose's Mose was supposedly born in France in 1785, at which point he served for Napoleon and served in the Russian campaign as a lieutenant. And then he served also in the Hundred Days Return of Napoleon. He received two Legion of Merits, and then because of his service for Napoleon in both both efforts, they forced him to flee the country. He fled to Nacogdoches in Texas, or rather he established himself there in about 1826 or 7. The story goes that him and his brother settled there and they took part in the Fredonian Revolution, which was in 1826. He settled there in, in Nacogdoches and then they also fought in the Na Battle of Nacogdoches and he became friends with Jim Bowie. In 1835, supposedly he joined with Jim Bowie. They went to San Antonio de Bejar and fought against General uh, Koss and drove General Koss and his 1100 men out of San Antonio, thus freeing the entire state of Texas of Spanish uh, or Mexican troops which led to the invasion of Santa Ana to recapture the Alamo and it is said that that is where he went with uh, Jim Bowie. According to the legend, when Travis drew the line in the sand on the 3rd of March, Henry Lewis uh, Lewis Moses Rose, rather, was the one person who did not go across the line. And when asked why he didn't cross the line, uh, he said, because I have children I need to live. He didn't have children. Uh, he climbed over the wall and fell into some um, cactus, which got into his leg and later on got infected. He then went towards the town instead of going down the river and snuck through the town and walked his way out of Texas. He walked up to a farm owned by Alexander Zubar and he supposedly was taken ill there and they nursed him back to health. From there he tried to go back to Nacogdoches but when they found out that he had fled the Alamo they marked him as the coward of the Alamo. Uh, they have wanted nothing to do with him. Uh, he had no more standing in the community. He then left the Alam I mean uh, Nacogdoches and went to Logansport, where he lived out the rest of his life in the in a uh, rather peaceful but still shameful uh, way. Now, let's go back and catch up with what is really known. First, uh, the Louis Rose that was from France was sought out, and it turns out that he never left France. And his name, last name was spelled R-O-Z-E. This man was R-O-S-E. We can, we can put up with the fact that there's a little differentiation in the spelling simply because this Rose was, was illiterate. So, whatever way they spelled his name was fine by him. But, if the other Rose didn't leave the country, why did this man assume his name and leave the country? Well, that's something that happened fairly, fairly commonly back in the old days. There were two reasons for leaving the area you were living in and assuming another name. One, you had done something that brought shame upon your family. Or, number two, you had done something illegal and the law was after you. 
either one of those instances, you would generally change your name, jump ship, and ride it out to wherever it was going. Now, Rose probably was from France. He probably did know the, uh, the Louis Rose that was in France and was knowledgeable enough about him. Maybe he grew up with him. I don't know. That when he moved to Texas, he took on his persona. And his brother, of course, took on the name Rose. That gave them a backstory to tell everybody, oh, this is why we fled. That way they didn't have to live up to whatever they had done in France. So that part of the story is either way it goes, it doesn't matter, they, they made it to Nacogdoches. He proved his valor at Nacogdoches because the people uh, gave him a uh, postal route from Nacogdoches to uh, Natchitoches which was dangerous territory in itself because there used to be a uh, uh, Sabine Free State which was between uh, Louisiana, the Louisiana Purchase that the United States had made and the Spanish and then Mexican um, territories in Texas. So they put a strip of, of, of land down the middle of them because it was being argued over they put a strip of land that neither one of them governed, and every ruffian, every uh, pirate, every thief went to that area. And uh, so it was a fairly dangerous area. Even though that had ceased in 1826, it still was a dangerous area to cross because all of the ruffians had not been cleared out of that area. The fact that he was Jewish was given in the story but that may have been added later because Jewish people were tended to be frowned upon during some of these uh, some of these uh, uh, eras, and you would add Jewish to something, and that would make them that much worse. And that didn't come up until after he was uh, already dead. So we don't know whether he was Jewish or not. Now, his befriending Jim Bowie would have happened in the Nacogdoches uh, fighting, and it is quite possible, and he could have participated with Jim Bowie in the uh, San Antonio de Beja raid uh, where they were successful in driving out Cos. But the Alamo shows nothing on either one of its uh, roll calls or road muster sheets that was done by James Neal, who was the actual commander of the Alamo. Uh, he packed up his things and left on February the 11th, which doesn't make him much of a hero to me either. But uh, Moses R Rose was used in determining whether somebody had died at the Alamo. So apparently there was enough credence put into the fact that he had been at the Alamo that they would use his testimony now, on one occasion, he put somebody at the Alamo on the 3rd of March, and he was not, in fact, at the Alamo. He was, it was proven later on that he died somewhere else. But the, the truth of the matter is, once he spoke about the, the line being drawn in the sand to Zubar, and Zubar had uh, given that information to Sam Houston, Dickinson... Uh, who survived the Alamo corroborated that story even though she said she knew of no Rose uh, or Moses Rose, Lewis Moses Rose in, at that area uh, of the Alamo at that time. She had never heard of him. Doesn't mean that she would have necessarily heard of him because she was an officer's wife and there was uh, men coming and going all the time. As a matter of fact, uh, probably during that time 500 to, to 550 men went through the Alamo either to or left the Alamo. So did she know them all? No. Uh, was the muster of Neil uh, completely 100% correct? Well, no. He's, he missed a few. So you can't prove or disprove by those alone that he had been there. Now you have to go to the, to the rationale behind it. Would you want to tell everyone that you 
had run from a battle that everyone idolized. It was the Thermopylae of Texas. It was the one where everybody died a hero. Would you want to be the fellow that said, oh yeah, I was there, but I ran away. For the rest of his life, he paid for that single statement. So we have to ask ourselves, was he lying to get uh, the infamy, or was he thinking there would be fame out of this? I don't think he wanted the fame because he moved to places that, that were very, very uh, solitary. He didn't, he didn't go to places that were, there were a lot of people. Uh, when he passed away, he passed away alone. He was 50, 51 years old when the Alamo took place. And as it says here, he died in 1850 at a ripe old age. Would I have done the same thing? I don't know. Uh, he did go out the same way that uh, uh, Seguin, Juan Seguin went out, who was the last person out of the Alamo as a messenger. He went out the same way that Seguin went out. Now, he would not have known that to tell the story to the Zubers if he had not actually left that way. Um, it would have been typical to have said, I left along the river road because the river road was the quickest way out of town. But through town, the township was sleepy and it was an easier way of getting out. Had he gone the other way, he would have ridden in or, or would have walked into uh, Santa Ana's troops because Santa Ana had put troops to cut off that road. He would not have known that had he not at least have been in San Antonio de Beja. So somehow he knew this information. The other is he was so emaciated when he got to the farm that he had to have been out walking in the countryside. Why would he have done that? So the questions remain could he have been there? Yes. Is it a distinct possibility? Yes. Do I believe he was there? Yes. Can I prove he was there? No. Uh, this is one of those things that history will have to interpret for itself because there is no definitive history on this. We don't know really who he was. We don't know really whether he came from, from that part of France or what. We know that he was probably a Frenchman because he spoke with a French accent. That's about all we know. So it, it's one of those things that really it's up to you to do some reading on. Give me your opinions on it. See what you think. Um, anyway, Jim McCarty, student of history, thank you for listening.